Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Donald Trump is currently surging in the betting odds. And while some people can be critical of betting odds because it is true that they're very volatile, the one thing that they do consistently show typically is momentum. And as we know, Donald Trump right now has the momentum. He's opened up an 11-point lead on Polymarket. And Kamala Harris, for much of you know the later part of September, she was in the lead. It was close, but she was in the lead. Didn't necessarily mean that she was going to win the election, but it did show that the momentum was relatively stagnant. A lot more people were putting their money behind somebody like Kamala Harris. But now, Donald Trump has an 11-point lead in the betting odds. It seems like everything is going in his uh, direction in terms of the polling, in terms of a lot of other things that we've kind of seen. And every single state is moving in his direction. North Carolina, they give him a 61% chance. Georgia, 64. Arizona, he's up to 66. Nevada's, you know, a slight Harris lead for now. It's 50-50 in Wisconsin, which is huge. Michigan shows Trump leading in terms of the percentage by a four percentage point advantage in the probability. That's not polling. Uh, that's probability. The chances that uh, the state will go to Trump is now at 52. And Pennsylvania, now he's got a 56% chance to win the state of Pennsylvania, according to Polymarket. Even on Predicted, which is typically more liberal, Donald Trump has taken a lead today for the first time in a while. It just kind of shows that the state of the race is not exactly heading in Kamala Harris's favor. And what does she exactly have left? Everybody has an opinion made up about Donald Trump. Kamala Harris has kind of like been this figure. She's been able to kind of do the Biden 2020 thing to an extent where she rides off of being this unknown. Oh, it's, you know, the anti-Trump candidate, the generic Democrat. But then people get acquainted with her and her record. And as time goes by, she's not really able to crack that, you know, 50% national threshold, especially with the fact that Joe Biden and his administration are extraordinarily unpopular. And she's tied to that at the hip, whether she wants to pretend to distance herself, which lately she's kind of not even trying to do that. It just shows that, yeah, it's not working out too well for her. And we are currently in an election cycle, late in the election cycle. We're in October of an election year. Has Donald Trump ever been within 2% of the popular vote this far into an election season? No. Has he ever pulled at 47% this deep into an election season? No. Has he ever gotten 47% or above of the national popular vote either time he ran for president? Uh, no, but he's currently polling at that right now, which is absolutely a big development and a big change from what we saw back in the 2016 and 2020 elections. Meanwhile, Biden's uh, disapproval rating is minus 15. And on top of that, Donald Trump's favorable rating overall, as things stand, he's doing relatively well. And you can look at the favorable rating as it stands today of Donald Trump, it's just minus 7.6. He's at 45% favorable. He was at like 41, 42 this point in 2020. And in 2016, in October, he was doing as uh, poorly as like 35% favorable rating. So his favorables are currently in a decent spot right now. Kamala Harris is, there's more uncertainty, but again, when they pull her job approval, it's really low. And when they pull Donald Trump's retrospective job approval, it's higher than it ever was when Trump was in office. People can see the contrast. And right now, Trump has the fundamental advantage on that front. And when you look at the swing state polling, Donald Trump, he currently leads in Arizona. He's up by one. In Nevada, Harris has a slight lead. Wisconsin, where polls have been atrocious at underestimating Trump. Harris with a very slight lead for now. We'll see if that holds. Michigan, Trump has a 0.8% lead. Pennsylvania, a 0.3% lead. North Carolina and Georgia are, you know, they're close. They're neck and neck, but still Trump has the advantage in those states as well. And we know how the late deciders typically go in these polls. We also know how uh, Donald Trump overperforms the polls in a lot of these states, especially in North Carolina and the Rust Belt. Uh, he did in the state of Arizona by a little bit in 2020, but the polls there and in Georgia typically are more accurate than the polls 
that we see um, in some of these other states like the Rust Belt. So overall, you see Harris was having the lead in the polls. Now she does not have the lead. Donald Trump is establishing himself as the favorite as things stand today. And in terms of these polls, a lot of these polls, their track record, it's not all that solid, but you have to look at the gold standards historically. Gallup is one of them. We'll get to Gallup in a minute, but Pew Research is another comprehensive pollster, very high sample size. And you could see this. They're polling voters from 2020 as well. And they asked, you know, are you a Biden voter? Are you a Trump voter? And they validated it to make sure. And when you look at this, Donald Trump is winning about 20% of people who voted for him in 2016 or voted third party, like, you know, let's say they voted for Gary Johnson and then they voted for Biden. Uh, You know, if you take the third party voters out of it, Trump is probably winning over 20% of those, uh, you know, Trump 16, Biden 2020 voters. But you look at the other, uh, you know, side of the equation, you talk about the two-time Trump voters, Trump is winning 97% of the two-time Trump voters. And in terms of the Clinton Trump voters, you're not seeing as many defections, and there's also less of them in terms of volume. And the voters who voted for the first time in 2020, uh, if they voted for Trump in 2020, Trump is retaining 93% of those voters with just 3% going to Kamala Harris. Harris is only retaining 87% of those first-time Biden voters in 2020, and Trump is getting 7% of them. That is not good. This poll is basically a virtual tie. And among 2020 non-voters, Donald Trump has an advantage, which is actually lower than the advantage that we've seen in a lot of these other polls, believe it or not. But what we do know is that Donald Trump is in a good position. They polled certain demographics that are bellwethers as well, white Catholics. He's doing 11 points better with white Catholics than he did in the 2020 election. You're replacing, you know, the supposed LARPing Catholic Scranton Joe with San Francisco Kamala Harris doesn't exactly work so well. You're talking about Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. That demographic is a crucial demographic the Democrats did well with in 2008, 2012. They didn't do so well in 2016. Biden helped them stop the bleeding in 2020. Now he's off the ticket. Kamala Harris is the Democrat nominee, and it's not looking too good for her because she has arguably a lower support base in some of these places in the Rust Belt than the current Joe Biden arguably could have, which is absolutely abysmal for her in terms of a comparison. It just shows how weak she really is as a candidate to appeal to the voters that are going to dictate the outcome of the election. And then we have Gallup, and this is old, but I wanted to go in depth about this because this has been the most accurate uh, indicator for the national popular vote. If you want to talk about 92 when Democrats won big, obviously there were more third parties in the mix, but 1996, 50 to 41, that's pretty much the Clinton margin there. Uh, Democrats had an advantage in, in 2000. Uh, obviously, Gore won the popular vote, but not by that much. 2004 was close. Republicans were able to get back to 50 50. 2008 was an eight point Democrat advantage. Obama won the popular vote by, you know, seven points or so. And then it was four points in 2012 when Obama won the popular vote by four. It was three points in 2016 when Hillary Clinton won the popular vote by a little bit over two. Five points in 2020 when Biden won the popular vote by four and a half. Now it's at 48% for the Republicans. That is a big, big shift. And you can look at the Democrats, they're down at 45. Does this mean Trump is going to win the popular vote by three points? Well, it's kind of a little difficult to, you know, jump the gun and say that. But one thing we do know is the Pew Research poll, which is also comprehensive, shows it as like a 48-48 in terms of the party ID. And that's exactly what I would expect. I think Trump could win the popular vote, but it's going to be close. The popular vote's going to be close. And if the popular vote is close, by the way, There's no way Kamala Harris is going to win this election if Donald Trump wins the popular vote or even loses it by like one point or less. There's no way. In terms of the major issues, Republicans lead on nine out of the top 10 issues. The economy, Republicans lead. Even in terms of like democracy and in terms of gun policy, when they polled them, Republicans lead on pretty much every single issue that they polled 
aside abortion, which is not as important of an issue as a lot of people have made it out to be in terms of the importance of it. And you could see this, and you could look at the past important issues that will dictate the outcome of the election. In 2020, it was COVID-19. It was race relations. Democrats were able to exploit both of those to an advantage point. They had the edge on those issues, and as a result, we see what happens. 2012, the economy, they still had the advantage. Um, 2008 was the economy. They had a sizable advantage. 2004, people were concerned about terrorism after 9-11, etc. Of course, Bush had that advantage. And you look at the economy in 2016 and these other issues like immigration, terrorism that were uh, relatively pressing then, the advantage was on the Republican side. The advantage was Donald Trump. And right now, the most important issues that are dictating this election, it's not abortion, it's economy and it's immigration. And when you look at that, that's not exactly the best uh, you know, situation for Democrats to be in. And you could go back even further and further and further. And obviously, polarization was a little bit less back then. So for example, 1980, inflation being an issue that you know, people said that they could trust the parties evenly on, but still they trusted Reagan a lot more than they trusted Carter. Um, but you had a lot of Democrats that would vote for Reagan, etc. for those reasons. 1984, obviously people were concerned about unemployment, the Cold War. Reagan had a big advantage. He won big. And people were concerned about the deficit and drugs and the economy in 88. And then, you know, Reagan's third term, basically, and George H.W. Bush, he won. But then the economy kind of went south in the last year, at least in terms of public perception, which, again, the fundamental numbers, just like now, they're touting them as good. That's what happened, but it didn't work out too well. And Democrats had that advantage. And Bill Clinton went out there and he won the election, despite the fact that when the primaries were beginning in that election, nobody really thought the Democrats would have that much of a chance. But the public perception definitely matters in terms of the economy, in terms of the issues that are regarded to be the most important. That's what's going to win the election. And that's why Donald Trump right now is establishing himself as the clear favorite. We see more and more polls every single day. They come out and what do they exactly show? They show either a very tight race or a Donald Trump lead in the swing states that matter, and he's gaining the momentum. He is on message. Kamala Harris is just, you know, flopping around in all these interviews. It's, it's you know, relatively embarrassing for her, and she's not really doing anything to gain support as things stand when you look at the polls. You know, her uh, polling ceiling was, you know, she polled as high as 49.4 after the debate, now she's currently at 49. Donald Trump relatively stable, 47%. He did poll as high as 48% at one point. If he galvanizes those you know, supporters back in the final popular vote tallies like 49 to 48 Harris, Donald Trump will win in the Electoral College fairly easily. And we still have ways to go, but the early voting data looks favorable for Donald Trump. The polls look favorable for Trump. The fundamentals look favorable for Donald Trump and the betting market showing the momentum. The momentum looks favorable for Donald Trump. So it's not done yet. Get out and vote. Do your homework as well. I tell people this. It's on the community tab. It's very important so we can make sure that Donald Trump can win this election. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.